This video was taken through a dissecting microscope. You're looking at nine fully developed eggs of the malaria mosquito, Anopheles gambi. The eggs are arranged on top of hardened bacto agar. Eggs are about one half millimeter long. Normally, they would either develop within puddles of water or on the mud nearby. Sometimes this mud and the puddles dry out under tropical sunshine. Upon looking closely, you will note that each larva has cut a hole in its egg shell through which it now projects its head. Larvae remain so for several days when not finding standing water or wet surfaces outside. Apparently, they choose to use their egg shells as a protective cloak while waiting for rainfall. Rain is soon likely to come during the tropical rainy season when this malaria vector thrives. The dark circle at the center of this frame is a small opening connected by tubing to a syringe filled with water. By depressing the syringe, we can flood these eggs with a small drop of water and watch ensuing events without displacing the eggs from our field of view. Here comes the water. Please note that all larvae respond within seconds and begin shedding their cloaks. They do so by a series of peristaltic contractions. For the most part, eggs maintain their position on the auger while the larvae move forward. Here additional water is added to the dish, freeing larvae to begin swimming motions. Swimming larvae propel themselves backwards by a series of vigorous tail lashings. Now we withdraw the water to permit larvae to exhibit a second mode of locomotion when on moist substrate rather than in standing water. When the halo of water around the larva diminishes to a point that tail lashing appears difficult, larvae begin what we call caterpillaring. Here they use peristaltic contractions running from tail to head to project the body forward. Both tail lashing and caterpillaring enable larvae to move about so as to increase the probability of finding a puddle that might be nearby. These first instar larvae have been documented to move more than 20 centimeters, while older larvae can move more than one meter on moist mud. Larvae are able to caterpillar only when there is sufficient moisture for them to maintain a halo of water about their bodies that provides buoyancy and lubrication. Because we've now withdrawn so much water that this halo is disappearing, you will note that larvae become inactive. Even so, we have found that they are able to survive for over eight hours in the sunshine and longer under darkness. Under natural conditions, it's very likely that sufficient rains will fall to rescue these larvae by forming a puddle around them or by washing them into a nearby puddle. Larvae of this malaria mosquito appear well adapted to a challenging environment.